okay? Well, um, oh, are you sharing through the Zoom meeting? No. Uh, people on Zoom, can you, you just like say your phone? Uh, what? Are you able to share? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we are ready to go whenever you want. Um, can you guys hear me on Zoom? I'll take that as a yes. Um, okay. So the plan for today's recitation is to, one, I'll just go over a couple s slides from Wednesday's lecture that I feel like are valuable. And then after that, we're going to actually Im implement a very s simple generative adversarial network. So yeah, let's get started. Um, from Wednesday, what we had talked about was a Generative adversarial network has a few parts, right? We have the generative model that is the one that we want to train. This is just the decoder inside of BAE. And we use a adversarial training with another network to be able to converge our generator. Yeah, so the goal here is to model the training data distrib distribution. And this is going to be Im important, as we'll see when we start to implement it. So we use um, two networks, the generator network and the discriminator network. And we use like a loss at the end that quantifies how well our generator is doing, i.e. is the things we produce r real or synthetic. Yeah, this is just the overarching framework. Um, I hope you guys are somewhat familiar with this. Z is our latent noise. And what we want to do is take this noise, pass it through the generator and generate some actual like data x prime and then the discriminator takes in x prime and the real data x and then it says is this real or fake and what we're going to do in a bit is do this exact process with the MNIST digits to say. Yeah, so we've seen this, we've talked about it, as well as this. Um, yeah, most of this is just review. I just want to make sure, make sure you guys are um, have the right framework in mind. So the generator pr produces X prime from the like latent vector Z. And this Z can be like sampled from any like standard Gaussian noise. And the and the goal here is to learn the generator such that the generated distribution of the synthetic data matches that of the true distribution. The discriminator here, like just as we had talked about, the whole point of the discriminator is to quantify how well our generated data is. And what we had talked about in last lecture was the fact that cross entropy loss was not enough to learn the generator. So we needed something else to quantify how 
we, we needed something to quantify the quality of the samples that we generate. And this is done via the discriminator. And then if a perfect discriminator is pooled, then the real and generated data can't be distinguished. So this is starting to get into what we're going to do. Both the generator and discriminator need to be trained to, to together. And this is very important as, um, yeah, as if the discriminator is too good or too bad, we will not get enough information to incre incrementally update the generator. Yeah, so the last part before we get started with the implement implementation. Um, the goal of the discriminator is to minimize this classification loss. So it's going to mark, it's going to look at the generated data and calculate the loss when it is all z zeros. And then take the actual data and compare its classifications to all ones. The goal here is to minimize this classification error between zero versus one. Any questions about any of this so far? So we want to maximize the probability of the discriminator setting a mm -hmm. one for all real cases. Then you want to maximize one minus that. So maximize the probability of the, the discriminator classifying zeros for all synthetic cases. Yeah, so how we actually train the generator is let's say we have this, discrimi this discriminator loss, which is just cross entropy loss. And now we want to maximize the discriminator loss, like in the shoes of the generator. And the, because the goal of the generator is to produce real samples, or as close to real as possible. So what we do is we want to minimize the number of classifications that the discriminator makes that are zero, which is the same thing as maximizing the number that's one. So this generator term can be reconstruct reconst the loss of it or the its objective function can be reconstructed to maximize the number of like d of x primes that are going to be one as opposed to minimizing the number that's equal to zero yeah and that little like min versus max thing is going to be valuable we'll see to improve uh generator convergence as we won't get saturated by gradients. And like this is the GAN formulation, which is a min-max optimization. Yeah, so something that's very important is the discriminator must be trained adequately, where it's not under-trained, so there's no actual feedback given back to the generator, and it's not overtrained. So there's no like, if if it's too good at saying whether it's real or fake, the ge generator will have nothing to go off of. So we want these marginal improvements by the by the discriminator being not very good, but just enough where 
you know, it, 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 it does classify good versus bad. Um, the discriminator is not actually needed after we conver <coughs> converge the generator. So, yeah, and then this is the pseudocode for training a can, and we will actually see this in like five minutes, actually. Um, yeah. So inside your training loop, you will first pass your generator output to the disc discriminator, calculate the number that is like labeled real, calculate the number that's labeled syn synthetic, use these to calculate the loss. And then once you have the loss of the dis discriminator, which is just a which is just the classification loss, you can do this some number of times. And like using the loss, you back propagate and update all the weights of the dis dis just the discriminator. Now what we can do after is then train the generator. And using that dis discriminator loss, we then backpropagate to the generator. Yeah. So that's all I really wanted to say from lecture. Um, I'll look at Zoom really quickly. Make sure you're muted on Zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any questions about that? I won't hop back on the Zoom thing. Um, okay, so I have this starter code that we will use. Um, feel free to work with me in your own notebook or something like that, and I will post all of this on the website afterwards. So if you miss anything, don't be too like, bogged down. Um, yeah, so in this notebook, we are going to implement a very simple, fully, con fully connected generative adversarial network. Um, this is ad adapted from this link right here. And the goal of this can is to model the distribution of the MNIST data set. So the goal is to try to generate samples that look like handwritten digits. And you'll see that we can actually do that pretty fast. So yeah, get started. I'll leave this configurations part blank for now and we'll come back and we'll see how that could change the network itself, we'll see that if we, if we don't have the right parameters, the, lo the loss will, either, will just go down to zero. So there's a lot of like hyperparameter tuning that has to be done to make this model converge. Okay, so. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing is just to load the MNIST data itself. Um, and this is not going to be too much. So to actually load the data, PyTorch actually has the MNIST data set, so we can download it using this command. And then in the configurations, there's a transforms that's going to turn the actual image data into like 
NumPy arrays. You guys have done this in homework two, part two. We'll, we'll do the same thing. Um, And then we want to download the data. So, yeah, let's get started. <coughs> In the configurations, just to set us up, I'll put like 15 epochs for now. We can change that later. And then batch size, like, put 32, let's say. Yeah, so now that we have that, let us initialize the, the, the data loader. Um, So this is just setting up the data set and the data loader classes. If we run this, so. So, yeah, so we just downloaded the data. If you come on to the right, you should be able to see the MNIST data set right now. There are stored as U byte files, which is useful, but not what we want to actually see what the images look like. So this right here just reshapes the image into 28 by 28, which is the size of, of any image in the MNIST data set. Um, yeah, so for the transforms, we can specify this later. I'll just do this as 25 for the time being. And yeah, so this is the data that we have. The shape is batch size by number of channels, which, which here is just one, because there's it's everything is grayscale. The size of the image is 28 by 28. And then the Y is what number we actually have. And this is not as useful to us as we're not interested in classification, we're interested in generation. So yeah, this is the data set that we want to model the distribution off of. Any questions so far? If not, um, okay, yeah. So now let's go on to actually implementing the generator and the discriminator. Now in lecture, we've talked about this, you guys know what it is, but to actually implement it is a bit, um, it's not as complicated as it might seem. So the goal of the generator, right, is to take latent noise and turn that noise into something <coughs> that has the same shape as the input data itself. So the generator will take in some the dimension of the noise and then the image and then the image dimension itself. And in the config, we've specified this as 28 by 28 just because of the MNIST data set. We can specify ZDIM to be whatever we want. Um, I'll do 64. And we'll see why I'm picking these numbers in a bit. Um, it actually turns out these numbers here is going to 
exactly make the model converge, but you you can play 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 around with that and see how um, the window for s uh, model how narrow that window for model convergence is. So, yeah. Now that we're in the generator, let's actually implement it. So, like, again, the goal is to take something that's of ZDIM or, like, and then turn it into something that is of image DIM. So we can... As I've previously said, we can use a fully connected network to make this happen. We, t we start at Z dim, and let's uh, project the input latent noise to some larger future space. Let's use leaky ReLU here, and then Leak URL you can take in an optional argument, which is the s slope of the line below that breakpoint. Then after doing that, we can then take our like projected feature space and turn it into image dim. And image dim here is 784 as a 28 by 28. So this is just like s scaling it up from 64 to 256 to then um, 784. And then this part is pretty important, but it's pretty s subtle as well. Uh, yeah. But we're doing 10H here because we want to normalize the generator outputs between negative 1 and 1. And this is going to be valuable because the discriminator will then take a normalized like range of values and use that to recreate the input itself. So this is it. This is the full generator. Now let's move on to the discriminator. Discriminator can be set up in a very similar way. The goal of the discriminator is to now take in my in features, right? And turn that into the sh same shape as the true training data itself. So again, we can use a fully connected network which is linear pro pro projections and, and, and nonlinear activations. So here, our in features is of size image dim. And then, sorry, I, I think I misspoke. The dis discriminator wants to takes in something that's of the size of our true input. So it's either going to take in the true data or synthetic data. And it wants to classify it as either real or fake. So our in features is of size 784. We can project that down to 128. Again, use leaky rel u as a nonlinear activation. And then project this down even more to a single scalar. And here we can normalize this by using a sigmoid, which then means our discriminator is fully just saying whether it's real or fake with the probability distribution that's equal to one, which is exactly what we want. So yeah, this is the generator and dis discriminator classes. And yeah, a 
Any questions about any of this so far? If not, we will keep on moving. And feel free to in, in, interrupt me if there's any questions you guys might have. So yeah, now let's set up the model itself. We just call these classes right here. The generator takes in our latent noise, like the sh size of it, as well as <coughs> the image dimension itself. Put that to the device. The discriminator, we can set that up as well. And then let's actually run this. And this is what we see. This is the dictionary for the generator, the dictionary for the discriminator. And it's very small, very simple network. All this should be pretty straightforward. It's just setting up the model. The main thing is when we actually set up the training loop. So this is the first new thing that we'll see now. As opposed to previously, where we only had one optimizer for the model, we now need multiple. One for the generator, one for the discriminator. Because although we're training them in the same training loop, the we we might need to train the dis discriminator more. So this allows us the flexibility to train them both separately. And also, we can update their weights separately. And this is part of the adversarial nature of like training these models. Take our generator parameters. Let's yeah, and we can do the same thing for the discriminator. And something to note is that we could have multiple learning rates. Like, like we can have a learning rate set for the generator and discriminator initially. For the time being, we'll just keep one for both of them. But in theory, you could have two different initial learning rates. And then this is the binary cross entropy loss for the dis discriminator itself. Notice that we don't have a loss for the generator as the generator uses the discriminator as a means to c compute its own loss. And then you can read the documentation in PyTorch. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully most of this is really review so far. Now we'll actually get into the adversarial nature of CANs. And similar to the lecture pseudocode, try to find it really fast. Um, yeah, in our training loop, we had something for the dis dis discriminator and something for the generator. And that's exactly what we have inside our training loop, we have training the discriminators for like this many times. Then we go on and train the generator. So something that we use to, like, or something that we will use 
just for our own reference, is some fixed noise. This is going to be some fixed latent noise that we use as reference just to look at the progress of our generator. So we can just make that noise. And then the shape of this should be of batch size by the latent dimension that we want, which is z dim. Right? And we are going to pass this through the network, so let's put this on the device. Now, these are going to just make a new folder here that helps us actually look at the images we create. We'll train it for some many epochs. Now, inside the data loader itself, we get our x and y. We don't care about y as we're not interested in the classification task. We're only interested in the image generation task. So let's actually but this true image here, we want to ensure that it's of size what, 1 by 784, as opposed to 28 by 28. So let's flatten this, enforcing that it's that shape. Yeah. Now we have this we want to take our true images, generate our synth synthetic images, and then calculate the loss for the discriminator. So let's start by doing the same thing as above, but now this noise is something that we pass every time we iterate. Now, we want to pass this noise through the generator. Now that we have, now we have our true images of size 1 by 784 and our synthetic images, which if you look at modules, this is also going to have shape of 1 by 784. Now let's pass this, the true images, through our discriminator first. And let's flatten the output, which should already be flattened, but just to make sure there's no like tensor in a tensor. We can do the same thing with the synthetic images. So what we've done is we've sampled some simple distribution to get noise. Then we've passed this noise to get our synthetic images. Now in one part, we, we are going to pass the true images and calculate the true loss. And then we'll pass the synth synthetic images through the discriminator and calculate its loss. This is probably the most Im important part of this adversarial training, is how we characterize the loss. So we specified the discriminator loss as um, binary cross entropy loss between the target and the input probabilities. The target is this, or this is what we have. And what we want is to label the discriminator, like the true images, as 1, right? Because this term, like in training the discriminator, we want to maximize this, which is setting uh, class 1 as true 
and class zero as syn synthetic. So let's label these true inputs or true like the train the training the actual training data itself as ones. And torch dot ones like is going to make a tensor of all ones in the same shape as disk true. So now what we're doing is we're quantifying the loss between our discriminator output of whether it's real or synthetic and comparing that to if it's all ones, which it should be if it's a perfect discriminator. The same vein, we can do the exact same thing with after passing the synthetic images to the discriminator. The only difference now is we don't want this to be characterized as ones, right? Because we want to maximize one minus dg of z, which is essentially characterizing dg of z as zeros. So we want to, in the same vein as setting the true images to one, we want to classify the synthetic images as zero. Any questions about any of this so far? This is probably like one of the more valuable things and important things to stress. So I can pause here for a sec. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have our loss or classification loss associated with the discriminator with respect to the true images and with respect to the synthetic images. We just want to take these guys and turn that into our full loss. Which we can just take the average of the two as our loss. Yeah, so now we zero out the gradients, we use this loss to backpropagate through the network, and we keep this graph, we, we do retain graph equals true to keep the gradients in our cache memory, which is gonna be helpful in terms of the speed of computation, and then we step the optimum. This right here is the training loop for the discriminator itself. I'll pause for a second. Okay, so now let's train the generator. After we train the discriminator for n step many times, we now want to train the generator, which we want to minimize just this part right here, right? Because the goal of the generator now is to fool the discriminator. So it wants to make sure that all of these classifications are wrong by the discriminator. So minimizing the probability that the synthetic images are of class zero is the same as maximizing the probability that the synthetic images are of class one. And this min versus max, as we've talked about previously, is valuable because maximizing doesn't suffer from saturating gradients. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We want to first compute the output of the network so 
and then we want to flatten it. All right, so this is essentially just this part right here. And then we want to compute the loss. of these discriminator label values on the synthetic images. Now that we said we want to maximize the pro probability of class one. So torch dot ones like output. Now we're gonna calculate the loss of the generator as a function of the discriminator. So this is, these two lines here really like show the adversarial training itself. So yeah, then we wanna take this loss and back propagate it through the generator and only the generator and then only step the generator's weights. That's why we have two separate optimizers. And then yeah, everything else I've kind of coded previously. So what we should see now if we run this. Oh, I see. Um, keep that as one. Everything else should be good. Yeah. So now what we'll see is loss generator, loss discriminator. And we're gonna, s and what this last part logging is gonna do is it's gonna take our fixed noise that we have, pass it through the generator, reshape it so it's of like the actual size of the, or like the actual size, shape of the image, and s Student. save this. Sorry, did someone say anything? All right, so yeah, as we let this train, we can look at what's actually going on. So at the very first epoch, it's all noise. And I'll blow this up in a bit. I will try to zoom in. It's all noise. After epoch one, starting to just like realize that the edges don't really matter. And like everything in the training data is really just in the s center of the shape. So we'll just let that train for a bit. Um, but yeah, this is the entire process of training a GAN on the MNIST data set. And in about like a couple minutes, we're gonna see what the results actually are. And it's what's very valuable is these, these losses aren't zero, right? If the discriminator loss is equal to zero, then it has exactly classified real from synthetic and the generator has nothing to go off of. If we had trained the discriminator more or done something else or changed the architecture, what we would see is this discriminator loss might be zero, which means the discriminator is doing too good of a job. Then the generator won't learn anything because it has nothing to go off of. But the fact that the discriminator is not perfect allows us to continually update the generator's weights, which is exactly what we want. Take a look now. Um, it's still looking mostly just like noise, very small perturbations. Hopefully in a couple epochs, we'll start to see convergence. Yeah, any questions about any of this?
Um, hello. Yes. Hi. Yeah. 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 Uh, could you please explain again, like, why you uh used the like in a lost gene? So why you use the to torch one slide rather than the zero slide? I mean, in yeah. a in, in the yeah here? the yeah the alpha and the lost gene. Okay. Yeah. So what I had what we were we had talked about before was the objective of the generator is to minimize the the objective of the generator is to fool the discriminator right yeah yeah so with that the dis discriminator is classifying these syn synthetic images as class zero. So the goal of the generator is then to minimize the number of classes that get mapped to, or the number of images that get mapped to class zero. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. And then that's the same as maximizing the number of synthetic images that get mapped to class one. Yep. And we and we do this min to max transformation only because minimization does suffer from saturating gradients. So if we want to maximize the number that's class one, then we want our loss to be with respect to class one. Okay, okay, yeah, I see, thank you. And then the optimizer is gonna take this and then, you know, use that to backpropagate and step through the gradients. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So hopefully you see better model conversions. It's still roughly like that, but the shape is starting to change a bit. Yeah, any other questions? That was a good question. You can start to see the generator pro producing something from the noise that somewhat looks like it could be a handwritten like nine. Not perfect, but it's not horrible as opposed to like something like that. So we'll see the results pretty soon. And this one looks like a three or like an eight maybe. So you can see that the generator is doing something that's not horribly wrong. And then what we'll see, and you, you can play around with this once we share the this notebook, if you even change some of these hyperparameters, even in a small way, we'll see that we do not reach model con convergence. I normalize by 0.5.5 for a reason, because if we use the normalizations for the and like use the mean and standard deviation from the true like from the MNIST data set it doesn't converge or it, it takes longer so
so now that's done we can look at what we have plotted or what we've done so sorry my layout's kind of bad. i'll try to refresh this yeah so this is 15 epochs worth of training at first it started at like almost all noise noise it kind of learned a little bit here and there small like changes to the weight itself but n nothing that was very useful then at like epoch like seven eight and on we start to see some sort of like rough shape of a number and here at the end we see something that looks like a nine and it could look like a three and if we kind of squint and maybe look these could maybe be like the number six so it's not perfect and then obviously we can use like a larger network to Im Im improve but this is just a very simple ex example of how we can use a dan to model the probability distribution or the distribution from the mnist digits data set so i will end with that um yeah any questions about anything if not thank you for showing up i know it's really early um yeah, feel free to post on Piazza if you have any questions, but have a good rest of the day. Thank you.